Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories, where today, Karen and her fiancé stole my business idea. I, 28 female, find myself in a really tough spot and I need some honest opinions on what I should do. My sister, who's 25, is getting married soon and the entire family is ecstatic, but not me. Her fiancé, who's 30, stole a business idea from me a few years back and I'm seriously considering skipping the wedding because of it. Backstory. I'd been working on a unique business concept for a few years, and I told my sister about it. I thought we were close. Fast forward a bit, and lo and behold, her fiancé launches the same darn business, basically stealing my idea and profiting off of it. This scheme is what is funding most of their wedding, FYI. I confronted them about it, and they played dumb, acting like it was just a coincidence, and they had no idea. I was furious, hurt, and betrayed, but for the sake of the family, I decided not to press the issue any further. Now the wedding is approaching and my parents are pressuring me to attend after I mention to them that I want to skip it. They argue that family comes first and I should set aside my grievances for the sake of my sister's big day. On the other hand, I feel like attending would be a slap in the face as I feel it would signal that what they did is forgivable and that I'm okay with being walked all over. So am I the jerk for wanting to skip my sister's wedding over this? Should I put aside my feelings and just be there for her? Or is it fair of me to take a stand against what feels like a major betrayal? I'm torn. Info. A few of you really wanted to know what the business idea was. I can't go into detail as it's pretty niche and it would be easy to look up and find out a bit too much personal info on my brother-in-law. I can tell you though that it was an app idea. It's identical to the idea that I was working on. Also, some people are defending brother-in-law by saying that I wasn't going to go through with it. I had been taking part-time entrepreneurship classes at a local college and I was teaching myself how to build an app at the time. I told my sister about it and showed her what I was working on. He stole the idea before I had the chance to go through with it and sold it to his buds. Now he co-owns it. I think it's also important to note that I dabble in photography and from conversations with my parents, it sounds like my sister wants me to be the photographer for her wedding, but I haven't heard anything about her paying me for it. So by not going, not only would I be causing a bit of drama, I'd also be leaving them without a photographer according to my mom. I never even agreed to photograph. This was apparently assumed by my sister. OP, tell your mother that if family comes first, then why did your sister and her fiance steal your business idea? It seems your sister has a unique idea on how to deal with family. Not the jerk. If you're 100% sure that the idea was so unique to you and he definitely stole it from you, not only would I not attend the wedding, I'd completely cut the sister off too for sharing your idea with him. That might be a bit extreme for some people, but I've had a similar thing happen to my girlfriend. My girlfriend says I need to get rid of my late wife's stuff or she's leaving me. I first got married at the age of 18 to my girlfriend I had known since we were 15. We enjoyed six years of marriage together before she passed in an accident, leaving me broken and depressed for years. A bit over one year ago, four years after my wife's passing, I met my current girlfriend at a work event and we really hit it off. I decided that it was time for me to start looking for a serious partner again and that my wife would have wanted me to be happy. My current girlfriend and I became more serious over time and we moved in together two weeks ago. I've talked with her extensively about my deceased wife and the mental health issues that it brought to me and she's been nothing but supportive and loving. The problems began after we moved in together. I have a small chest that I used to keep under my bed that has a few things that belong to my late wife along with some photos of the two of us. During the moving process, my girlfriend noticed the chest and asked me about it, so I explained what it was and I showed her the contents. I didn't really expect for it to be a big deal but since I showed her, things have never been worse between us. She sat me down that night and explained that because I still had the chest and wanted to keep it, it was an indication to her that I hadn't moved on from my deceased wife and that she doesn't think she can continue the relationship unless I get rid of it. I was pretty shocked at this and told her that I needed some time to think about it. Well, it's been two weeks now and I still don't know what to do. My current girlfriend and I have had no major problems up until this point, and she's asking me daily when I plan to get rid of it and says she can't live in the same space as the chest. I really don't want to get rid of it, but I want to continue my relationship with her as well. What can I say to get her to understand? Or am I being crazy by keeping those things for years? Update. 
Some people were wondering how often I look at the chest and talk about my late wife. I spend prolonged time with the chest and its contents usually twice a year, on our anniversary date and the date of her passing. So I'm not constantly opening it and having it out and around and stuff. I feel as though I find the most comfort just knowing that it's nearby, strangely enough, which is why I wanted to keep it in the house. Most of the conversations about my previous marriage have been prompted by my girlfriend, not me. I can talk about it pretty openly when asked about my late wife, but I seldom bring her up on my own in conversation. She used to be all I ever talked about, and it was annoying and uncomfortable to people in my life. Looking back on a lot of our conversations, my girlfriend would frequently ask questions trying to gauge if I was still mourning or if I was happy again. Now with the chest incident, that makes sense to me that it has been an unvoiced insecurity for a while. At the time, I suppose I just thought she was asking if I was depressed still, but I see now that she was trying to ask if I was over my late wife. When my girlfriend asked me to get rid of the chest, she did in fact mean dispose of it. I didn't go into great detail about the conversation we had when she sat me down, but I proposed keeping it more tucked away, not in our bedroom, or at another person's home, and she continued to say that I was still hanging on and not ready for a relationship in her eyes, and keeping it somewhere else didn't change that. I'm definitely not getting rid of the chest, and by that I mean disposing of it, and it's been locked in my car the past couple of days while I've been dealing with this. I got some really good advice from you guys, and tried to have an open, honest conversation with her today, asking her why the chest was so significant as to give me an ultimatum, and why she felt like I had to get rid of it to continue growing our relationship. She said the entire relationship we've had, she's always felt like she had to match up to the standards of my late wife, or be even better so that I would stay with her, and that me still having the chest was the confirmation that she will always be less than. If I got rid of the chest, it would be confirmation that I was ready to give my whole heart to her. This broke my heart honestly, and I couldn't believe she never told me she was feeling this way and that I didn't see it. It also made me feel confused, because I've been trying to show her the best I can that I can give her my heart in other ways. Why do I need to dump these precious memories to do that? I told her that the relationship with my late wife and my relationship with her are entirely independent of one another, and that I was focused on building trust and love with her, not trying to replace my late wife or compare her by any means. I told her that I couldn't dispose of the chest because it meant a lot to me sentimentally, and that I wasn't keeping it to hang on to or cling on to my late wife. I just felt as though it was an important part of my history, and I wanted to honor her memory. Some of the trinkets in the chest were from when we were 16 years old, going to high school dances and learning how to drive together. I couldn't simply trash those. I reassured her that I loved her for exactly who she was, not the position she held in my life or how similar she was to my late wife. I told her that I could see us building a life together and that I was focused on our future, not my past. I told her that there is absolutely no competition and that while I was hurt by the ultimatum, I was ready to move past this and move the chest to storage or somewhere else. It wasn't enough for her. I don't know what else I needed to say or do to communicate my love and dedication, but she was dead set on me getting rid of the chest or her leaving. I told her a final time that there was not an ounce of a chance I was getting rid of it. Radio silence. Then she gets a bag of her stuff, hops in her car, and drives off, ignoring me when I asked what was going on. After calling her multiple times for a few hours, I learned she's staying with a friend, who she called in the car I guess, so she originally just drove off not knowing where she was going and making arrangements to move out next week. I'm still in shock, but I mostly feel confused and hollow. Maybe I truly wasn't ready for a relationship. Maybe she's just crazy. Maybe a bit of both. OP, this person doesn't understand you or your loss. I'm a widow. It's been nine years now without my beloved. The first three to four years were horrible. For the last five years, I've been living in harmony with my new partner. We're very content and this relationship is strong. I too have a memory box that was created when we began living together. Over the years, I have needed that box less and less because time really does heal. I also have a memory box for my late mother and sister. Those memories are priceless. I still have my sister's little christening gown. As my heart is healed with my partner's support, I've been able to move on, but those priceless boxes will follow me wherever I go. In some ways, I'm the gatekeeper of these precious moments. You are behaving in a perfectly reasonable manner, your partner is not. This past year, I almost forgot my late husband's anniversary of his passing. I always put up a temporary Facebook photo of my late husband. This year, my partner reminded me to this little act of remembrance because of my late husband's family appreciates it so much. 
I had to smile to myself because this meant I had truly moved on and it solidifies the fact that my partner always has my back. I hope you find the peace that I have attained and a loving partner that always supports you too. It's not that you haven't moved on, it's that your partner is too insecure to allow you to put your memories in their proper place and wants to eradicate your previous life before her. That's very selfish and I'm so sorry. I'm amazed but also kind of scared of my girlfriend. I, 28 male, have been dating Jen, 27 female, for two years and she's amazing. Kind, smart, funny, pretty, everything. She has a really warm and bubbly personality, smiles and laughs a lot. I'd say she has RNF, resting nice face. She's also 5 foot 5 of caged fury. Between her looks and approachable personality, she gets guys who flirt with her a lot. She also gets a lot of women who are jealous of her. I used to get really jealous when guys tried to talk to her and she would get mad at me for being jealous. Let me be 100% clear. She's not particularly flirty. She doesn't initiate conversations, doesn't lead guys on. She's not looking for male attention. I'm 6 foot 1 and somewhat intimidating build. So my go-to move is standing tall with my arms crossed and staring at the guy, then saying something like, Is there an issue? Instead of immediately jumping in when guys start flirting with her and causing an argument with her, I started to pay attention to how she handles unwanted attention. She's like a ninja deflecting creeps and mean girls. She reads the situation and knows when to act nice, when to ignore them, when to be firm, and when to leave. I started to realize I don't need to be jealous and she can take care of herself. I tore up my knee over the summer. She basically moved in to help me during my surgery and rehab. She's been amazing, taking me to things when I couldn't drive, making me food when I couldn't even stand, helping me do my PT. I'm still wearing a knee brace, but I'm getting there. She loves to dance. Although I'm terrible, I love going with her because it makes her happy and she looks incredible when she's dancing. Since my injury, we haven't gone out much and we haven't gone dancing. I'm not able to dance more than a slow dance, so I got her friends to go with us so she has someone to dance with. Pretty sure she likes dancing with her female friends more anyway. It was me, Jen, a couple, and two girls. The couple left pretty early. Watching her dance, I had a moment of clarity. All I could think was how lucky I was that I'd be going home with the person I most loved in the world. I realized I wanted to marry her. Three attractive women dancing are going to draw attention. I'm no hater, but it was funny watching guys try to flirt with them and glad that it wasn't me anymore. This group of guys in particular weren't getting the hint. They surrounded the girls and tried to dance behind them. Jen said something and pushed them aside. The girls came back to where I was sitting and the guys are glaring at us. Club closes and we're walking out towards my car. Turns out the guys weren't ready to let it go. A couple of the guys were insulting us, especially me for being a beta, that I'm not a real man. The irony that these guys think I should have been protecting my girlfriend was totally lost on them. They're getting louder and more aggressive. We try to defuse the situation, but they're not letting up. A fight seemed inevitable. We're a block from the club, so I tell the girls we're going to head back to where the people waiting for Ubers are standing. They block our way, and I'm about ready to get in their faces, hoping I can intimidate my way out while the girls get away. I have one bad leg, and if someone shoves me, I'll probably fall down. Plus, there's only one of me. Jen suddenly releases a stream of insults toward these guys and doesn't let up. I'm not sure she even stopped to take a breath. They were shocked, and so was I by the genuine rage directed towards them. I've never seen her so angry. They're backing up while she's moving towards them, screaming. She's driving them back towards the crowd while also creating a commotion. I told you, she's a ninja. Some club goers start to come over and it's clear that they aren't on the guy's side. The guys are embarrassed because they're getting upbraided by 120 pounds of white hot rage. This is the part where I should be embarrassed. My girlfriend who is eight inches shorter and 75 pounds lighter kept me from getting my butt kicked. Honestly though, it was one of the most coolest things I've ever seen. She's a keeper. I better get a ring on this one before she realizes she can do better. Update. I was trying to work up the courage to talk to her about our future and make sure we were on the same page. I know she loves me and wants to be my wife, but she has a lot she wants to achieve, like going to grad school. I would have understood if she wanted to wait to get engaged. It still would have hurt though. She was sitting on the couch reading a book and I was just looking at her. I was thinking, she's so amazing, just talk to her, everything will be fine. She looked at me through her big dumb glasses and smiled. 
That was the final push I needed. Fortunately, we were both on the same page and ready to take the next step. We just went on a long weekend. We were walking to a little spot with a beautiful view for a picnic and I pretended to stumble and re-injure my knee. Pretty sure she didn't buy it, but she played along. She loved the ring and of course accepted. I'm amazed by and kind of afraid of my fiancé. I think what I did was fine, but you decide. Okay, so this started a major fight between me, 24 male, and my girlfriend who's 24. So my girlfriend and I have lived together for 4 years, been together for 6 years, high school sweethearts. At 20, I was lucky to be making quite a bit of money and so I bought myself a new Jeep Wrangler as a second car to have fun with. My other car was my birthday present for my parents when I turned 18, a 2017 Subaru. My girlfriend's car was totaled right after we moved in together and so I let her use whichever of my cars I wasn't using and put her on my insurance. She never ended up buying another car because she can't save money and she has gotten comfortable in my new fancy cars compared to her 04 Camry. Now we get to the problem. She crashed both of them in a month. My Jeep just needed $4,500 worth of bodywork, but my Subaru was a total loss. She was totally fine, no injuries whatsoever. Both of them were her fault. The Jeep she pulled out of a parking space too tight and scraped every panel from front to back and destroyed the other car. The Subaru she was texting and driving and hit a parked car at 25 miles per hour in our neighborhood. Now I get that accidents happen, but she took no responsibility for either accident. The Jeep is somewhat understandable, but to be texting and driving, something she knows I feel very strongly against, and not take responsibility made me upset. So I told her it's fine, but that I would be taking the insurance money for the Subaru and sell my Jeep after it was fixed and buying myself a new car, and that $5,000 of it would go to her to either buy a cheap used car or use as a down payment for something nicer. Wait, you're going to give her $5,000 after what she did? Why? She said okay and nothing else really. The next Saturday, when the Jeep was fixed, I did exactly what I said I was going to and bought myself a tricked out Volvo. My girlfriend was working and came home and went ballistic, saying she couldn't believe I didn't get her a car too and wasted it buying such a nice car for myself. I told her with a $5,000 down payment, you can pretty much buy exactly what we had before, maybe a bit newer, but she was mad because she will have monthly payments and won't be able to afford everything for her skincare routine or be able to save to buy Christmas presents. That bit about presents for her family really made me feel like a jerk. I did offer to help with that and explained I just wanted her to have an asset in her name. If we ever broke up, you would need your own car. And that set her off again about if I see my life with her or not. She's staying at her mom's house currently and won't talk to me. Am I the jerk? ETA. Yes, we live in the US, but I'm not originally from the US. I'm a dual citizen. So she wrecked not one, but two cars that were not hers and feels zero remorse for it? And she expects you to not only help her get a car, but straight up pay for one so that she can go about spending her money on whatever frivolous materialistic thing she wants? Your offer to give her money for a down payment on a new car is more than what she deserves in this situation. She's an adult who should be capable of doing adult things. Also, her trying to guilt trip you by saying she won't have money for Christmas gifts is a poor excuse for not wanting to pay for something. Not the jerk. The fact that she's 24 and acting like this is truly perplexing. OP. Yeah, never seen this side of her. Also, she's never been this close to her mom her whole life. And personally, I think her mom is influencing her decisions. And technically, it's nine cars. She wrecked her Camry sliding out on ice at 50 miles per hour and hit three parked cars. Then my Jeep, she did significant body damage to it and totaled the older car. Then the Subaru, she totaled, hitting a parked car texting and driving, and the car she hit struck the car in front, but most likely not a total loss. She totally shouldn't have a license. Update. Well, it's been almost two months since I posted and also two months since we broke up. I appreciate everyone who didn't just call me an enabler. So she was the one to break up with me. Her reasoning for wanting to break up is that she no longer saw me as a romantic partner, but rather as a boss, landlord, and a parent. It definitely hurt since I still loved her even through all of this. She moved out the last of her things from my storage on Saturday and brought her new boyfriend with her. Not to be judgmental, but he looks homeless, so that was kind of funny. 
I did end up giving her the $5,000 I promised her, and well, no other way to say it, that was probably a mistake. Instead of buying a car, it looks like she bought her mom and her a trip to Mexico. She posted it on her Instagram, and I know she didn't have that kind of money, and her mom most certainly didn't pay for it. I honestly don't know if she has a car or if she's still driving her new boyfriend's car, her mom's, or decided to just use transit and Uber. As for me, I still love my little Volvo. My best friend going back to middle school ended up moving into my condo now that it's just me, and I got a really lucrative new contract at work. Haven't bothered looking for anything romantically since the breakup, and have been working on myself and trying to identify what qualities I really want in my future partner. So yeah, sorry to everyone who is hoping for some bigger drama. I'm going to call you an enabler again because you stupidly gave her $5,000. Hope you grow from this experience, but please know that that was really stupid. OP, honoring my word is important to me, maybe to a fault, but you know what? I'll take that over being thought of as a liar or a flake. Cut it out. It makes no sense to give her the $5,000 after she totaled one car and caused $4,500 worth of damage to your Jeep. OP. Yeah, I would not let her back in my life. I realize now that it was a one-sided relationship. For trips, Christmas, her birthday and such, I constantly had to one-up last year or she would be upset. I'm learning a lot from my therapist about self-worth. All in all, I'm glad I kept my word and gave her the money. I'm trying to wrap my head around giving someone $5,000 when that person is at fault for wrecking not one, but two cars. I'd be demanding money from them for that, not giving them money after the situation they caused. What on earth? Am I the jerk for telling my husband he'll always be second? My younger brother, who's 22, developed a neurological disorder in his teens. When he was old enough, he became my responsibility. He seems just like everyone else, but he needs supervision and it would be very difficult for him to live alone. My husband knew this when we started dating. I've told him a billion times my brother will always be my priority. He understood. My husband and brother's relationship has been decent. My brother doesn't care for him much and my husband treated him kindly. Like I said, he was quite understanding. Things started to change a couple of months ago. He's not mean, but he's become distant. I asked him if everything was all right and he asked me if my brother would ever move out. I told him the truth, most likely no. Of course we don't know what the future may hold, but my brother still needs me at this moment in time. My husband didn't push it. The other day, my husband came home with one of his coworkers. I was given no warning. I tried calling my brother so he wouldn't be overwhelmed when he came home from his job, but his phone was dead. So when he did come home, he was extremely overwhelmed and I had to take him on a walk. My husband called me several times while we were out on the walk, but I didn't answer. Honestly, I was a little annoyed, but mostly I was busy with my brother. We went home eventually, and his coworkers had left, thankfully. I was just going to let it go, but my husband yelled at me for embarrassing him in front of his coworkers. I asked him what he meant by that, and he explained that I had a bad attitude with everyone and was very inhospitable. He said I didn't act like his wife, and one of his coworkers made fun of my husband for marrying me. By this, he meant cook for and entertain them. Keep in mind, had he given me a warning, I would have done so with no complaints. But was I supposed to read his mind? I told him to snap out of it and he should know better. My husband rolled his eyes and told me that I only have my brother in my head and that he's just a second thought. He then called my brother a name that he shouldn't have. This made me extremely angry, so I told him there's no use in getting mad at me. He married me knowing that he'll always be second. He called me insufferable before leaving. Now he's with his mom and she yelled at me for coddling my brother and neglecting my husband. I'm curious and you let off steam. Am I the jerk? Edit. Just in case anyone gets the wrong idea, my husband isn't involved in my brother's care, like at all. Not even financially. I wouldn't put that burden on him. He did go to a few therapy sessions just to understand my brother's disability. But that's it. Not the jerk. And maybe also no jerks here. Your husband is a jerk for snapping, yes, but my guess is just after all this time, I guess you're not married since yesterday, it's starting to grind on him, and this is to a point where he can't keep it in check anymore. So it comes out in a bad way. This is human and it can happen. I think you have to think this over. What will happen if you have kids? When you're 82 and have your own set of health issues, will you be able to take care of your brother then? Will you not go on vacations, not have kids, or have them raised by someone else? 
not have a dog or a cat or a garden, not have a career or hobbies because you have to take care of your brother? Will you divorce and stay single forever if necessary? Your husband might be thinking more and more about both your future and becoming frustrated. I think that parents with disabled kids should not push the responsibility to their siblings, but prepare for a good solution after their passing. They apparently did not do that, and my guess is that this impedes your marriage going somewhere. Your being full-time caretaker of your brother can lead to you not having a life, but also being the caretaker for him until the day that you pass, with every other responsibility or wish coming second. So when things have calmed down a bit, maybe look into assistance for your brother. Part-time, a good facility, whatever, there's options. You don't need to go from, I'm 100% his caretaker, to, I don't care for him anymore. You're the jerk. You did what you thought was best for your brother and you were rude to your husband and his guests in the process. Your husband apparently settled for second seat in your world, but he quite reasonably thought you'd find that you had some courtesy and respect and maybe even love in your heart for him. His mistake. Not to worry, however. If you keep up the good work, you'll have no husband to worry about. My boyfriend takes advantage of being a golden retriever and I'm fed up with him. I, 28 female, have been with my boyfriend for six years. We've been living together for the past two. He's a giant, dorky, handsome gamer with a naive, childlike heart. Recently, he went on a work trip with a new colleague, who's 29 female, and came back on cloud nine. Shortly after, I noticed he was hiding his phone. I asked if he noticed he was doing so, and he said, Oh, no. A few days later, I explicitly asked if he was texting his colleague. He said, Yes, and I lied before when you asked because I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. We had been going through some other relationship issues related to his avoidant attachment, so I believed him but asked if he could slow down building this new relationship as we worked to fix ours. He agreed. He's a golden retriever. He just wanted everyone to be happy. Two days later, I felt what can only be explained as women's intuition. I asked to see his phone, which I've never done before. Sure enough, Hundreds of photos were shared with the colleague over the last few weeks and messages shared with her while I was left on read. I asked to see Instagram and he added and DM'd her mere hours after I asked him to slow things down. I thought the messages were flirtatious, talking about showers, how it's dangerous to go against HR and add her on Instagram. But he assured me that he was not capable of that. Again, he's just a cuddly dog. A week later, he told me that he told his colleague that I was uncomfortable with their relationship. I wish he hadn't aired our problems out to her or blamed me. Then he asked me if he could start texting her out of work hours again. He feels bad that he made things awkward. All throughout this, he still neglected our underlying relationship problems and instead prioritized her and her needs. When I call him out, it's my fault for assuming such a lovable guy could be capable of such calculated betrayal. He's close friends with two of his exes, so I don't have a problem with him having female friends, but this is different. Am I overreacting or just stupid? It sounds like he loves the feeling of having a new person to text, DM, and share with. He loves to share with people and get the validation from them that he's a great guy to be around. So either you have to accept that his new thing is going to take priority or don't and find someone who will be more into you as their one-to-one -one thing than this guy. You can only change yourself and you know what he's like, so the choice is yours. The two exes as fake friends would have been the end for me, much less the emotional and possible physical cheating happening with the coworker. He's right that he is a dog. I once dated a man like this. He painted Dungeons and Dragons figurines, and I naively thought nerds won't cheat. He had a woman living with him the entire two months he chased me. Even after I called him out on his BS, he still periodically texted me or messaged me until I blocked him everywhere. Funny as heck, cause this guy thought he looked like Chris Pratt. More like Chris Pratt. My 18 year old daughter refuses to get a job because she's a single mom. I have two daughters, April who's 18 and Jade who's 15. I'm a single mom. April and Jade's dad and I got divorced around 13 years ago as he was having an affair. He's never been in the picture for either of our girls after that. When April was 16, she unexpectedly got pregnant. I took her to counseling to help her organize her thoughts and figure out what she wanted to do, and April decided she wanted to keep the baby. The pregnancy and birth went smoothly, and I now have a grandson, Ollie, who's two. The father is involved, but he and April are no longer together. 
Ollie stays with his dad every weekend, and the dad's parents give April money to go towards Ollie's expenses. Earlier this year, April graduated high school. She's been taking care of Ollie during the week, but other than that, she hasn't been up to much. She keeps saying that she'll start looking for a job, but she hasn't even started writing a resume. Besides taking care of Ollie, she just sits at home watching TV. On multiple occasions, April has tried to leave Ollie with Jade so that she can go out partying, which has led to huge arguments. Last week, I talked to April, and I told her that she needs to get a job or go to our local community college, and that I'll foot the bill for any childcare she needs for it to happen. I told her she needs to get a job or go to college in order to stay here. April got upset and said that she doesn't want a job or to go to college. She said she just wants to be a mom. She told me it can wait until Ollie starts school. I told her no and that she needs to start something so that she can support herself and be an independent adult. April said I'm being unreasonable and that these things can wait until Ollie is in school full time. She said that I'm asking her to damage him and that he needs his mom. It's not that I don't want April and Ollie here. I love them both. I just think I'd be setting a bad precedent by allowing April to continue to stay with me with no job and no education in the making. You're the jerk. That's basically teen mom territory. You should be supporting her. That's an extremely hard situation to be in. If you're capable of supporting her, you should. As a toddler mom myself with no job or schooling, objectively, you're the jerk. I would hate to be told I either had to sacrifice my time with my still developing kid in the most crucial years of their life or move out. But I also have tried to look for jobs and my mom told me to stop before I got pregnant. She has never pushed me to do anything like that. She's encouraged it, but never with ultimatums. Yes, you're the jerk 1 billion percent. Parents are meant to 1. Set the example for their kids. 2. Be there for their kids. She's barely a legal adult. Her brain won't fully develop until she's about 25 and you're telling her she needs to be a single mom with a job or go to college or she gets the boot? She needs community and support. She's become a teenage parent during the middle of a lockdown. She doesn't need your lack of parenting making her life worse. An entire you're the jerk and forget you for that. That's straight up abandonment. You're the jerk. You sound exactly like my mom, the woman who got my kid taken away. My mom hounded me every day about getting a job because she forgot how stressful it is being a young mom for the first time. Every time I tried to do something as simple as play a video game while my son was in his crib, my mom would flip out. She threw a fit every time I wanted to go out with friends or God forbid go on a date. My psychotic mother's treatment of me led to me majorly resenting my kid to the point where I would leave for days on end and just block her number. She decided that instead of showing me support and being a loving grandmother, reporting me would be a better option. The state decided I was unfit to be a parent. Gee, you think? I was 19. Maybe my mom could have been an actual, you know, grandma? I feel so sorry for your daughter and I hope she goes no contact with you since you're nothing but an unsupportive jerk. Reddit, the internet's official worst place to seek parenting advice. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or their daughter, please let us know. Please never seek parenting advice from Reddit. I can't think of any worse place. Am I the jerk for letting my sister's kids live with me? I, female 50s, have a sister who's in her 40s who sees herself as a my family lives in a camper van Instagram influencer. In 2020, she, her husband, and their four kids moved into a camper. They homeschool the kids, travel all over the US, etc. They come to visit for holidays, but we don't see them besides that. My husband and I are the opposite. We have four kids and live in a big, beautiful house in Colorado. So the issue. My sister and her family came over for Thanksgiving and spent the night. My sister's oldest, 13-year-old twins, a boy and a girl, slept in my daughter's and son's rooms. In the morning, my niece and my sister got into a big argument with my niece being incredibly angry at her mother for making her live in a camper when she could have so much more space, not have to share so much with her brothers, they all sleep in the same area, and be able to have more clothes, friends, and extracurricular activities. I asked what was going on, and according to my sister, this has been an argument for a while. Money is not an issue. They had a huge house before and sold it for a massive amount of money. My sister has a trust fund and a job. She just likes living in a camper. After a brief conversation with my husband and my kids, we offered, in private to my sister, 
to take my eldest niece in. We have extra guest rooms and could make one a bedroom for her. There are great schools in our area. We'd pay for everything for her, etc. She instantly said no, that she knew what was best for her daughter. She would miss her siblings. We didn't mention it again. Well, my youngest, she's 13, told my cousin about the offer. She was very happy, but angry that her mother hadn't brought it up to her. She told my sister that if she made her come live in the camper again, she'd never do anything her mother wanted because it was unfair that her mother wasn't letting her have a true childhood. While I don't condone tantrums like that, I understand where she was coming from and helped convince my sister. When her twin brother found out, he wanted to stay too. My sister asked him what she was supposed to do without them. How is she going to care for the younger siblings without them? Talking about missing out on family trips, etc. But nephew didn't change his mind. We agreed to a trial period, three weeks, which ended three days ago. My sister came back, fully expecting her kids to want to come back with her, but they flat out refused to even go in the camper. My sister is very angry. She said that I was supposed to make them want to live with her and that I'm a horrible sister for treating her like this. She said I should kick them out and I said no. She said that I'm a massive jerk and told her kids to not expect her to come back for them when they get tired of maximalism. Now her kids are sad, but they still don't want to leave and I'm worried I've ruined my relationship with my sister. Am I the jerk? Edit. I've been told that the technical name of the vehicle I'm referencing is a motorhome. It's one of those large, I don't know, house on wheels things. I thought that they were called campers since that's what my sister always calls it. Edit 2. Someone in the comments mentioned I should add this here. We have temporary guardianship signed by my sister. Her husband came over after they left and we filled out the power of attorney forms got the things we need to put them in school, etc., and he took them back and had her sign them, so we should be all clear. My brother is an attorney, and he helped us with the forms as well. I can see why your sister may not like it, but I don't think the camper van life is suited to all. The idea of it would be horrifying to me, both as an adult and a teenager. And I suspect a lot of 13-year-olds would want to have friends and hobbies that aren't just online. You brought up the idea in private, which was a good way to approach it, it's a shame your daughter wasn't able to keep it private, but truthfully, I think she did the correct thing. Your sister asked them what she was supposed to do without them? This sounds like parentification, which is not a good thing for the twins. They should be living the life of teenagers, only helping to look after younger siblings if they are paid babysitters and only for a few hours a week, if they want extra money. You're not the jerk. I thought that after the first paragraph, and the rest just confirmed it for me. Not the jerk. Your sister sounds selfish and like a lunatic. She wants to live this way, but her kids don't. They need a stable home, friends, family, and education. Living like nomads is not something most kids can do. End of the day, you are helping your niece and nephew out. You're not beholden to your sister or supposed to do anything but help the kids. Yeah, you strained your relationship with her, but that relationship is not worth the health of these kids. Well, who do you think is the jerk, OP or her sister? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, how I hate moving. I can't even bear the thought of moving every week or so living in a camper. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.